For over 50 years, the United States has lagged far behind the rest of the world when it comes to high-speed rail. But that is finally set to change thanks to an ambitious, privately funded project underway to connect Los Angeles and Las Vegas with the nation's first true high-speed line. This new railway aims to transform travel in America's West through record-breaking speed. But with huge costs and engineering obstacles, can it succeed where public projects have failed? It's hard to believe now, but America once boasted some of the most advanced railways on Earth. Following the Transcontinental Railroad's completion in 1869, the country's vast railway network facilitated commerce and migration that shaped the nation. But in the 1950s and 60s, everything changed. The rise of automobiles and commercial air travel provided new transportation options. As more Americans took to the roads and skies, passenger rail travel declined sharply. The U.S. government failed to invest in modernizing its aging rail infrastructure at the time. So while other countries like Japan and France forged ahead with bullet trains in the 1960s, America fell far behind. The U.S. continued relying on 1930s engineering, while the rest of the world adopted high-speed rail technology. Today, the fastest trains in the country reach just 150 miles per hour on Amtrak's Asila line. That's less than half the speed of the world's fastest trains. For a nation that pioneered railroads, it's been a stunning reversal of fortunes. but America's high-speed rail failures may soon be reversed by an ambitious new privately funded project called Brightline West. The $12 billion railway initiative aims to transform travel between Southern California and Las Vegas with record-breaking speeds over 180 miles per hour. It would connect Los Angeles and Vegas in just three hours, far faster than driving or flying. The 225-mile route is spearheaded by the same Florida-based company that recently opened a America's first new intercity passenger railway in over a century. Building on that success, Brightline West leaders are confident they can usher in true high-speed rail where public projects have struggled. Their incremental approach uses existing infrastructure while adding new rail segments. Brightline West will follow the I-15 highway corridor along much of its route. Running primarily within the median, it minimizes land acquisition issues that have delayed projects like California high-speed rail. Construction is expected to begin soon, with a target completion date of 2028. That would make it America's first bona fide high-speed rail line. The $12 billion price tag may seem immense, but most funds would come from private sources, not taxpayers. So far, around $3.75 billion in public funding is confirmed. That includes a recent federal grant to begin design and prep work. Brightline West enjoys bipartisan support, with officials touting benefits like congestion relief and expanded tourism. With climate change impacting air travel and urban highways maxing out, Americans may finally rediscover the convenience of train travel thanks to this ambitious initiative. Make no mistake, Brightline West faces major hurdles. Firstly, most of the $12 billion budget must come from private bonds and investment. That necessitates a convincing business case to attract sufficient backing, and public funding has already proven difficult, taking years to secure initial grants. Opposition groups also keep lobbying lawmakers against contributing taxpayer dollars. Investor confidence has become critical. Engineering barriers also loom large. The Cage on Pass section involves traversing a mountain gorge with steep grades unsuited for high-speed trains. Existing tracks hug hillsides and make tight turns that high-speed trains simply can't handle. Straightening the route will be costly and time-consuming. Engineers may have to build long bridges or tunnels to maintain the necessary speeds, and acquiring land in the pass will carry its own legal and survey challenges. Even if tracks are straightened, the Cajon Pass terrain will force speed restrictions. That could mean the total journey time increases over initial estimates. There are also concerns about operating high-speed trains so close to traffic on I-15, and crossing so much empty desert exposes the railway to sandstorms and extreme heat. It's sure to test engineers' creativity, given high-speed rail's unique demands. Assuming construction goes smoothly, another uncertainty is whether Brightline West can attract sufficient ridership. Arizona recently backed out of a plan to extend the line to Phoenix due to doubts over profitability. The Las Vegas and Los Angeles metro area 
areas have over 20 million residents combined, but car culture still dominates the region, especially for weekend trips. Airlines are sure to fiercely compete with discounted fares. Brightline must offer unmatched convenience through downtown stations, quick boarding, and reliable service. Executing flawlessly will help drive early adoption. Once riders experience the railway's advantages, high demand may quickly materialize. The path ahead is clearly filled with risks for Brightline West, but the company believes its incremental strategy based on proven approaches in Florida gives it the best odds of succeeding where California's publicly-led project has floundered. Many experts agree that Brightline's simplified permitting, flexible designs, and private sector discipline improve the chances of finally realizing America's high-speed dreams. Brightline West offers a stark contrast to California's long-delayed high-speed rail project. While both aim to transform travel between major cities, their approaches differ greatly. Brightline West relies primarily on private funding and leverages existing freight infrastructure. California high-speed rail depends entirely on government subsidies and builds completely new lines. After eight years, California's project remains less than half-finished. Litigation and disputes over land acquisition have slowed progress to a crawl. Its skyrocketing costs now exceed $100 billion, and there are no connections yet between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Experts believe Brightline West in Nevada could open first, despite starting construction years later. Brightline chose not to copy California's model of building dedicated passenger tracks along the entire route. Doing so requires acquiring huge amounts of land, an arduous process out west. Eminent domain battles have plagued California's project and fueled public backlash. Instead, Brightline secured key rights of way by leasing or acquiring existing freight tracks that allowed construction to begin faster. California High-Speed Rail also opted to rely entirely on federal and state funding sources, but securing the huge required public subsidies has proven difficult year after year. By utilizing private capital, Brightline West was able to move forward more rapidly. Its built-in funding discipline may also help contain cost overruns that have crippled projects like California's. Ultimately, Brightline West backers believe an incremental approach has the best chance of success. By adding higher speed segments to connect urban hubs like LA and Vegas, it can demonstrate benefits before seeking funds for true high-speed rails. The phased build-out may create early wins that sustain public interest. If California's project had taken a similar tact, it might be much further along today. For decades, America's high-speed dreams have ended in failure. But veterans of those shortfalls believe Brightline West offers a real chance to succeed where others have stumbled. By pursuing a step-by-step -step strategy based on proven approaches, it aims to avoid the pitfalls that have derailed previous efforts. What's different this time? Firstly, Brightline has recent experience building higher-speed rail in Florida, which tempered its plans out west. That first-hand knowledge has shaped its pragmatic vision and and flexible execution. And its private funding model attracts more patient investors focused on long-term returns. Previous projects relied almost entirely on government grants before construction even started. When public funding dried up, momentum evaporated. Brightline West has locked in enough private capital to begin work while gradually securing more subsidies. That puts time on its side. The decision to largely utilize existing highway corridors also reflects lessons learned. Negotiating bespoke routes and acquiring land decimated schedules and budgets elsewhere. By minimizing new land impacts, Brightline aims to contain costs and sidestep legal quagmires. The small and nimble company can also pivot faster when challenges emerge, and its executives are willing to revise designs and phasing if needed to keep moving ahead. That intrinsic discipline boosts confidence that this time, America might finally get high-speed rail right. Make no mistake, Brightline West remains a hugely ambitious endeavor. Law divisions never realized before could certainly collapse again. But after decades of inaction, this privately-led initiative offers America its best shot yet at high-speed rail. With fresh thinking and 21st century engineering, the nation may soon claim global bragging rights in railroads once again. Against the odds, American ingenuity could prove unstoppable. High-speed rail has long been an elusive dream in the United States. But if Brightline West succeeds,
leads, it could usher in a new era of modern competitive passenger trains. The project faces big financing and engineering obstacles, but seems to have the right ingredients to potentially go all the way. America's first true high-speed railway may soon arrive against all odds. And it could be just the beginning for reviving rail travel around the country. After decades of lagging behind, the U.S. may finally get on track.